Welcome along, ladies and gentlemen, to the Hop Noodle Factory. Ah, you've just hit me. About my mid-morning snack. Or oh, that'll be lunch, to be fair. What we have here lined up in front of you is a beautiful four kilograms of Eldorado and Vic Secret. Eldorado, Vic Secret. All going in to today's beer which I think I'm going to call Secret City. Sounds like a good name for a beer, doesn't it? Not sure what f uh, yeast I'm going to ferment this beer with, though. Probably going to punt with the Bernie Sanders. Probably. We shall see. So I did promise you that I would share the recipe with you. Well, here it is. So this is a Christmas sneaker. Yeah, should be ready in time for Christmas. It's going in can for Christmas time. And as you can see, there's my little bit of water treatment there. All pale malt, nothing else, just pale malt going in there. And then of course, down here, we've got the four kilograms of hops going in for a 30 minute steep at 80 degrees. And then, yeah, we've got an American West Coast Ale there, but like I said, it's gonna be, it's gonna be Bernie's, I believe. We've got some ascorbic acid going in there. That'll probably go into secondary, just before canning, to help with any oxidation that we may pick up during canning. After last year's, um, the, 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 whatever word I'm looking for, situation with the New England IPA is picking up a bit of oxidation. Probably down to the oats in the recipe though, to be fair. And then of course, the dry hop, which is including three kilograms of Vic Secret and two kilograms of mosaic there we go so that's all there is to it if you want to know where the ascorbic acids come in from it's Murphy's by the way and I've also been doing a little bit of research on using some gluconase enzymes to help with lautering or running off the mash so the last time I made a big porter which has a fair amount of wheat in there I got the worst gummy stuck mash that I've ever had so I've had to leave the wheat out on the next batch of porter simply to avoid that five hour sparge and knockout which was awful but with the help of a bit of beta gluconase maybe just maybe we can kind of circumnavigate that issue so as you can see this is the mash tun full of grain. This is the boil kettle filling up oh, with the lovely beer. And hopefully within the next 40 minutes, we will be at a boil or getting close to one. So we'll probably come back then. Of course, there's no exciting hot drops or anything like that on this particular beer until right at the end. And then tomorrow, it'll be another brand new recipe, which I haven't actually designed yet. Uh -huh. It's approaching 3.30. It may have just gone past. And we are chilling. Have been for 25 minutes. A little bit of overrun because the HLT is nearly full. In fact, I think it is full. So we'll have to switch over in a second to drain in the excess water away definitely need a bigger HLT so we've got four kilos of hops in this bad boy I zoom out a little bit and in here is the beer oh you can see look at the state of the sides of the kettle that's from where I've been stirring the hops in those marks with that spoon all this um, protein stuck to the lid look oh that's lovely so we've got it in tanks anyway it's just about finished there's the grain to go out to the farmer so it's the black tilt we're looking at 1061 ish we'll not be far away from that this is pretty close you know these tilts are to the actual hydrometer reading that we get the fermenter is sitting exactly where I want it to be 
19 degrees. I have already put the Bernie Sanders yeast in. The tilt is in. The um, enzyme is in there. My Brewer's Clarity enzyme, which reduces haze and the gluten content of the beer. Again, vegan friendly findings only in this place. In fact, we're a fully vegan brewery now. I'm sure I've mentioned that before. Uh, should have a malt delivery coming this week. I'm down to my last five bags of pale. We do have some other stock in the back though. We've got some mild malt and uh, plenty of wheat malt. Tomorrow's brew, talking of wheat malt, is going to be a blueberry wheat beer. Yes, I know, right? A blueberry wheat beer. So I think you'll want to tune in for that one and I've still not got around to putting these letters up yet the broom shed somebody uh, sent us an email the other day to the broom shed it's the brew shed folks get it right right I'll probably pop back with just another clip of the bowl kettle washed out just before I go home. I'll tell you what I have done though. Here's something that you might find interesting, you might not. I suppose I've not done a beer review on the channel for a long time. Well guess what I've cracked open while I'm waiting for this. Yeah I can only have one at that 7.1. But the Mango IPA, excuse the pump in the background, there's very little I can do about it. The Mango IPA is looking wunderbar and just have a smell can you smell that yes I'll do it for those of you who can't get to the uh, screen oh it's wonderful let's have a taste mmm so main character that comes through is the mango some peachy notes in there tiny tiny little bit of malt presence but not a lot I think I've got this just right it could do with more fruit but it is a fruity beer regardless of that it's much more fruity than those artificial beers that you get you know that use the flavorings not even the natural flavorings like our plum porter for instance uses natural flavorings some of them use artificial flavourings and they're just hack. But this, well, you've seen the video, I'm sure. It's got mango in it, it's got mosaic in it, and verdant IPA yeast. It's probably coming up to six months old, maybe a bit longer. You can see the carbonation just rising in the glass there. And. I'm really quite happy about it. It'd probably work better if I do that. There we are. I'm, I'm really happy with it. That carbonation has actually brought the flavours out in this beer better. And a little bit of age, a little bit of maturation, a bit of conditioning has really helped enhance the flavour profile of this beer. But alas, I don't think we've got many on the shop, if any. Uh, I struggled to find this can actually. We've probably got half a case left. So if you wanted one you'd have to be quick. I'm not sure if we've got any though. Either way, after I've tried this, next up is another beer that I've made recently. It's only been in can for, oh my god. See what I mean? Look at all the water coming down the side of the HLT look at that oh steaming <laughs> no harm done yes another beer which I have in here along with some home brews which I still need to get round to trying from Backyard Brewery in Lincolnshire I will drink these very soon I promise. I've just uh, not been going hard at them at the moment. So, 
Bohemian Pilsner, 5.1%. I'm really looking forward to trying this. Stick around, stick around, and you'll get to uh, get to have a taste. Uh, no, you won't. No, you won't. You'll get to see me have a taste. And by the way, what I mentioned about three or four minutes ago, this is the Brewer's Clarity that we put in. 10 millilitres in a 500 ml batch of beer. That bottle's nearly empty. So I've just ordered some more today. I can tell you now, it ain't cheap, folks. It's a couple of hundred quid for half a litre, or a litre, whatever it was. Jesus Christ. And this is the beta gluconase as well. That's to help with the mash tomorrow. Tune in for the blueberry wheat beer recipe. Oh, and this is some uh, Bertoli. And I may as well show you what's in here now, hadn't I? Yes. Castello Tickler. Extra mature. Cheddar cheese. Oh, cheddar. Right, anyway. I'll finish my mango and I'll be right back. Mango, man, come back again. I'm back. I've just turned the radio off. The transfer's complete. And uh, I'll just show you what I do. I normally hook up the transfer hose to the HLT outlet and I pump the HLT water, which is at 55 degrees, no less. Remember, we've just collected that from the boil kettle plate exchanger. Collected the heat from the boil kettle. And, uh, yeah, back flush everything. So, there you go. It's coming in to the plate chiller now. And it's pushing all of that tube and whatever else has been sucked out of the bottom of the boil kettle, the last bit. Pushing it all through the plate chiller, through this pipe work, down here. And ultimately, into the boil kettle through this arm. So it's rinsing this arm out. And I'm going to drain the boil kettle in a second, but before I do that, I wanted just to show you if we can get past the steam, the height of the hops. Oh, I didn't think we would. Ah, oh, there we go. So that there is the takeoff port, and the hops are right up at the top of it. So let's come back round here and show you exactly what we've got. So there's the takeoff port. So all of that section below, all that cone, is full of hoppage. So if I open that, and just close that briefly, then now the water is going to go in there, and it's pushing that hop cone up. And in a moment, we'll see if we can open that valve. And see it all come dumping out here. Oh, there we go. A considerable amount of trub. Wouldn't you say? But a lovely job, nonetheless, of getting rid of it all. So, back up we go. And this ain't going to be easy, because I am holding the camera in my left hand now. The so first rinse off a little bit of the shrub from the uh, lid. There you can really see that starting to make, make an impact on the stuff that's stuck to the, stuck to the pipe work and what have you. I'll zoom in a bit. So you can see it. And then obviously it's kicking a lot of the steam out. Because the tank's really still quite hot. That's what that cracking is. There we go. I apologize if you can, if you can hear me breathing it down the camera. 
I'm trying to do two things here, so I don't know where my head is. It's on my shoulders. go 90% rinsed so you can see most of it's come off the sides but not all of it you get a tide mark around the top so we'll uh, just rinse that off that might come off around there actually And we'll rinse the top off a bit better than what it is. I'm not going to do it with the camera because I'm kind of frightened. It's going to, you know, I'm going to drop it in there. But we'll come back and then we'll put some hot water in here. And once the hot water's in there, hey, <laughs> zippy! Once the hot water is in there, then we'll add some caustic and set up the spray ball and the recirc. That'll clean it all out for us. So there's something you might find interesting. So during the cleaning process, I pop the filter off, of course, to remove everything that's been collected in there or trapped. And every now and then you get quite a big chunk. And this is a combination of hop debris and trube or proteins from the malt. And it smells really quite nice. I'll pop that back on the floor anyway and uh, give me and a rinse in there that's quite hot water oh wow so what I've done at the moment sorry for the shaky shaky um, yeah I've got water in there hot water so we're going to turn the, the pump back on and we're going to belt the water through the plate chiller mainly, you'll be able to see it come through here when I open this up anyway. There we go. And usually it clears pretty well, but every now and then we do get some bits of pop debris in there. So I like to induce a little bit of water hammer. And you'll see what tends to happen is it pulls the particles off the plate chiller. You see those there, look? Because what's happening is the pressure is increasing dramatically when I slam that valve closed. And that's damaging my plate chiller, for sure. But it's also knocking off the particulates that are stuck on there on the inside. So if I close it, do we have many? Just one or two. But I tend to do this with the rinse water. I'll zoom back out again. Open all the valves up. So the water's now flowing through everything. And you just give that a minute. And then I'll knock it off and drain it. And there is the drain water, but if we go back up and have another look inside, compared to how it was 10 minutes ago, you see it's a lot better. Most of that stuff's off the side. We've got a little bit of a hanger on here and there, but I can just knock these few loose particulates off if I want to with the hose pipe, but actually I'm not going to bother. What I will do is take this jug down to the sink to be washed. And what we're going to do ultimately is close that bottom valve again and add some cos gleam. So first things first, bottom valve shut. Then secondly, we want a metered dose of water in there. So we're going to go 20 litres, 
sorry, you probably didn't see any of that. But yeah, I just set it to 20 litres and hit run. That's what's happening now. We've got 20 litres of water going into the boil kettle, as you can see. And then usually, I would measure out the exact amount of Cosgleam here by using my dosage guide chart for caustics. Needs updating by the way. Not much has changed. But because I'm at the end of the, uh, pretty much at the end of the container, I've taken the pump out the top and I'm just going to go up here because this isn't critical. See if we're going to clean it or it's not. And I'm just going to add a healthy dose. There's a little bit left in there. I may as well ditch it in. It won't do any harm because it's not chlorinated cleaner. If it was HyperQuest I'd be a little bit concerned of overdosing. But on this occasion I'm not. Then we'll close her up. We'll take this down here. Now I'll put this jerry can on the cask washer tomorrow and we'll rinse it out. But for now it's going back into the bunding and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our pump plug it used to be wired into here with this but I've actually taken it out and I've wired it in to a timer simply because I can now set my pump to run We'll get it going through all the pipe work, through all these straight pipes first, and then through the plate chiller. And then what I can do is I can leave this and go home. And this will turn off automatically in an hour's time, and the tank will be clean. I'll come back in the morning, rinse it out, and give it an acid wash before I brew on it again. And also, um, the HLT will turn itself on automatically in the morning as well. So I don't have anything to worry about. So how do we turn the HLT on? That's simple, we turn the HLT on there, we set to 79 degrees and we press the auto on button. And that's it. Ready to go. Make sure we've got the reset pump on and the reset valve is open. Okay, so now we can hear the caustic buzzing around the pipework. I'm going to close that valve off and open the valve to the plate chiller and we'll see just exactly how much cack is still in that plate chiller. Lovely clear water which we've just rinsed it with and we should get a brown flush when the chemicals actually react. There we go. Beautiful example, then it runs clear again. So that is now running out of this red pipe. Through the spray ball and it's cleaning the kettle. I'm going to leave it like that boys and girls. There we go. Right, so I've decided to come into the workshop where it's a little bit quieter to pour out the Bohemian Pilsner. So this should be carbonated now. I think we're about three weeks in. Don't know what it's going to look like. I've sh shaken the can a little bit. So it might not be as clear as I'd like it to be. But here we go. Let's have a look. It doesn't look too bad. Just got to make sure I catch any trouble? Well, he says it doesn't look too bad. How does it look? How does it look? <laughs> it looks friggin' fantastic! Oh yeah, look at that. Well, I'll take that, thank you very much. Bohemian Pilsner. But more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, as we know, the most important thing is how 
indeed. Does it taste? Well, it's got a slight malty nose, very little hot presence. It smells beery, which is probably a good thing. Let's dive in. Cheers. <sighs> yes, I knew straight away from the first sip that is the best Pilsner I've made yet. Get in. I'm very pleased with that. It's clean, it's crisp, it's crystal clear. Slightly low on the carbonation front, but that will come in time. What I didn't want to do is overcarbonate this, and I've overcarbonated a few times recently. Mmm. That is freaking wonderful. Well, there we have it. I think that no more needs saying. What do you reckon, boys and girls? No more needs saying. Get your brew on. Friggin' right. Hey, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheers.